Hi, good morning. I'm Alf Sharp. This is my humble woodworking shop. Come on in. It's a kind of a funny story how I got started in woodworking. I was in law school and, and I woke up in a cold sweat one morning and realized that was the last thing in the world I wanted to do. So I dropped out of law school and sort of bummed around for the next couple of years just doing odd jobs and uh, just, to, just to keep uh, flesh on the bones. And um, I ended up on a carpentry crew and everything just clicked. I just instantly knew what I was doing, understood everything that was asked of me. And that was over 45 years ago. One of the secrets of this work is, is what I call working to your work rather than just working to a predetermined set of measurements. Then you take measurements off of what you've already done rather than just off of a piece of paper. So here is the back. Let's see how it coincides with the back of this chair here. Yep, pretty well the same thing. A good, a good chair is put together with mortise and tenon joints. The mortise is the hole and the tenon is the tab that slits down into it. And together they make a really strong and rigid joint. Okay, so now we're gonna we're going to start out with a rough board like it came off the sawmill. And we're going to plane it flat. So, at this point, I sight down to see, and I certainly haven't got it flat. That's a woodworker's pride right there. <clears throat> a plane that'll make shavings like that. This is the lathe. It's an ancient tool. Before electricity, it was powered with just a, a foot pedal. It's been around since ancient Egyptian times and is a lot of fun to work with. If you've been to the White Oak Fair, you might uh, recall seeing me turning on this little, this small lathe that I have. Uh, I've been doing that for several years, making uh, knickknacks and small items right there in front of people. This is an example of what uh, what I'm turning now. Just a pencil holder or whatever else someone might want to put in it. Some of these little vessels have, have lids to them. Some of the lids I put uh, I put minerals, uh, semi-precious minerals on top of the lids to set the piece apart. I basically use two different kinds of finishes. I use a French polish which uses shellac as the medium and the, the technique is a French polishing technique. And then I use uh, lacquer, old fashioned lacquer, not, not the new modern catalyzed lacquers, but the old fashioned lacquer, um, which, which, is, which is more durable to liquids. So for dining table tops and the like. My stock and trade is traditional work, but I like contemporary work. And I had this beautiful piece of uh, live-edged myrtle. And <clears throat> it just struck me one day as I was sitting and looking at it that it would make a great little side table. So I put three legs on it and just let its natural glory show. The Tennessee State Museum has several of my pieces. One piece is definitely on exhibit at the Tennessee State Museum because it's part of a historical exhibit. Uh, it's a bench in, in the the panorama of the, uh, the Battle of Kings Mountain, a bench made out of a tree where the battle was plotted. Uh, and then the tree came down just a few years ago and, and the state wanted to make something significant out of the lumber. Thank you for visiting my shop. 
I've enjoyed having you here, and I certainly appreciate the Art Center for featuring all the artists around here. It's really a wonderful service that they're doing.